But you mentioned, you know, this kind of, uh, to paraphrase Mark Andreessen, you know, AI is eating software and software is eating the world. Um, I want to talk about this phenomenon, which uh, I've done a little bit of research on uh, for fun uh, for the podcast. It's yeah. called lock-in, and I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but I'll, I'll just describe what it what it is. It's uh -huh. the phenomenon by which an early technology uh, becomes super dominant, cannibalizes everything that came before it, uh, really? because it it enables some new efficiency or new capability that heretofore didn't exist. Right. And, you know, there's a couple of classic examples. One is the QWERTY keyboard, uh, which is not optimal, uh, and it's not efficient from a human, you know, from a frequency of words and, and typing perspective. Right. But it was invented because the typewriters that were early uh, early adopted uh, had this problem that the keys, the mechanical hammers, would stick together if they were used too, uh, too often next to each other. So they wanted to space letters apart that were so that they wouldn't be pressed at the same time and you wouldn't have this lock up not lock in but lock up yeah, really An bad. another example is the you know the, the quality of the hubble deep field image uh is is great it's breathtaking but it could have been you know as good as uh as the web telescope images which are you know 10 times better if not for the fact that the backside of a horse is about a meter across so when the romans designed uh chariots to be pulled by two horses that was set by the width of the horse horses rear end mm. and because of that the the roads and the train tracks that later took play took precedence over the roads had a width of about two two you know two to four meters to One. accommodate two chariots going back and forth and uh because of that and because of the fact that the space shuttle uh was built its boosters were built in utah and the launches were in florida they had to transport these r massive rockets through train tunnels all the way from Utah in the U.S. to Florida, which meant it had to go through a train tunnel, which meant it couldn't be bigger than a certain diameter, which meant that the specific impulse, the thrust, couldn't be above a certain amount, which meant they couldn't get to a high enough altitude that it could have taken a better image. Okay. Wow. These are examples of lock-in, that, yeah, that yeah. some early technology establishes yeah. the, basically dooms the future into uh, into this, you know, kind of uh, irrevocable prison that it can't escape from. And I'm wondering... The success, this transition inflection point with LLMs plus GPUs, I'm worried it's another type of lock-in. And as successful as it is, I'm worried that we won't get the things that I'm most interested in, which you know, new laws of physics and 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 new descriptions of mathematical reality, et cetera. Do you worry about the the success, not not the 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 failure, not the AI winters and stuff, but do you worry about the the summers being so bountiful that it will crowd out? essentially any competing and possibly better technology. Yes, I, I think you're spot on because uh, if you, and, and here the lock-in weirdly is the incredible amount of data that we have been able to scrape off the internet, right? And also, con and the presence of GPUs. Now, um, the, the GPUs, one can argue that they're just a computing element which haven't necessarily lock, locked us in. But I, I think this LLM revolution has been made possible because of this extraordinary amount of data uh, on the internet, right? And uh, and we have managed to somehow create uh, these models that are learning about uh, you know the knowledge and the the sort of syntax of human written language, and kind of uh, it's an intelligence that is imposed from the top down. These these machines are not learning things from the ground up the way, let's say, humans do or animals do. And our general intelligence very much is a property of the fact that nervous systems have evolved over evolutionary time and nervous systems have encountered things in their environment and have enabled the, you know, the development of uh, brain structures and algorithms that operate in those brains from the ground up. And, uh, and I hadn't thought of it in the way that you're framing it, but it makes complete sense that uh, the economic in incentives now to succeed in, in this arena uh, is so high that there's so much money uh, that is being poured into building these LLMs and they're getting bigger and bigger. People have uh, bought into the uh, argument that uh, scaling up is going to unlock more and more quote-unquote intelligent behaviors. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
yes, at this mo at this moment in time, we are certainly locked into this um, particular form of uh, you know AI. Um, so much so that I'm sure there are many, many, many smart people who otherwise could have been doing other kinds of um, research into you know uh, different kinds of models that would potentially learn how to generalize better, uh, be much more sample efficient, like our brains are, use much less energy than these LLMs do, etc. And all of those uh, areas of research have probably been kind of uh, squeezed of funding because of the money that's going into developing LLMs. So yeah, entirely entirely possible that we are in a phase of lock-in because of this uh, current trend.